Welcome back to some more draft talk as we're going to take a look at some of the non-Power 5 prospects in the upcoming 2022 NFL draft. Some guys that could really improve their stock, whether it's through the bowl season or the off season draft process. But some guys maybe I haven't really touched up on on the channel that didn't really make my rankings. I want to kind of talk about these guys a little bit more in depth. But What's crack a and It's your boy Barosh Mode, just in case you did not know. So go ahead, become a bro and subscribe. Leave that thumbs up if you enjoy the content. As always, let me know what you think in the comment section below. I always look forward to hearing from y'all and kind of list some of the guys that maybe I haven't talked about here. And uh, if you didn't know, now you know. Bam! All merch, 25% off. Use the promo code all bro 25 in all caps if you want to get some of that new merch look at that it's actually over here look at that that's my logo as santa claus what a photoshop but let's go ahead and get it into it today and let's start this i'm going to give you all 10 i'm going to start with bailey zap a guy that has been often talked about in the comment section but that I've really got to, and now with a lot of these quarterbacks deciding to come back, didn't make the list, probably would make the list now because this quarterback class is, uh, it's not it's not that deep. It's Some people want to compare it to last year's class, but it was a way more top heavy, and then it really fell off after like day three. This is a guy that could be an early day three prospect, maybe even after a really good senior bowl, get into that day two area but he's a transfer from houston baptist real hot name ended up going to western kentucky i thought he may may have went to a power five school because the guy's been pretty good he's actually got i would say an nf arm he's got a pretty darn good arm he could throw the ball accurately at all levels of the field he's got some pretty darn good zip he could throw it on a rope and again this is this is a guy that actually believes in his arm talent Sometimes to a detriment because he's really willing to throw in tight coverage. He's willing to throw in double coverage. He doesn't really care. He's like, I can make that throw. And you know what? I can respect that. I can respect that. But I think because the dude had 24 turnover worthy plays this season. You saw it there in his uh, final season with Houston Baptist that he is prone to make these throws that ah, they're real dicey. They're real gambles and they don't always work out that's why his big time throws are like through the roof as well because he's he's a guy that can make these throws he moves actually exceptionally well in the pocket he's got sneaky good athleticism and th i think that could translate to the nfl like i think this is a guy that you want mind in like maybe a play action heavy uh system where you have him rolling out the thing is sometimes i wish this guy would just decide to pick up yards with his feet take the easy yards but the guy is constantly looking down the field to make a big play. Just sometimes, just take the easy yards, my friend. So I think he's going to make a lot of money potentially at the Senior Bowl because he's got the arm talent. The Senior Bowl is the right place to be for quarterbacks that have great arm talent. It, the Senior Bowl just kind of accentuates that arm talent. The thing is, I'm curious if the decision-making will be problematic. That's what I'm really kind of looking forward to see currently got an early day three great on him again this class uh it kind of falls off way into here i don't think tanner mckee um will come out because he's another guy that just needs well he's just a guy in this class that just doesn't have enough drop backs to his name small sample size but like the class really falls off because guys like slovis uh brennan armstrong hendon hooker uh, you could even say Jake Hayner or Sean Clifford. Not that I really thought those guys were draftable. Those guys are deciding to return as well. And, like, what do you have after you're, like, a Carson Strong, a Desmond Ritter, who are kind of like that tier two of guys sometimes. Carson, sometimes they kind of get talked about as tier one as well. But what do you have after those guys? It's kind of like you got McKee, who's probably going to come back. And then Bailey Zapp. Yeah, and then what? Brock Purdy, you got uh, DTR at UCLA, which I don't even think he's a quarterback at the next level. Uh, Dustin Crump, like you got these guys that are like, are they even draftable? So it's going to be interesting to look. But let's keep going. Let's talk. Let's go. Let's go to Division Two play and talk about Troy Anderson out of Montana State. This is a guy that uh, he just missed, probably would have just missed the cut for me. 
um, in my linebacker rankings. A lot has to do with he's newer to the position and where he plays. But I got into this because of Dan Brugler. Uh, I think he's from the Athletic or the Reiner. I can't remember. But th- I saw him uh, tweet about him on the Twitske. But this is a guy that's played multiple positions. There, You could go Google up Google image because uh, he used to play running back. He used to play fullback. Now he's playing linebacker most of the time. Uh, sophomore season, he settled into the linebacker position. He's got a senior bowl invite, by the way. I think this is a guy that's going to make some good money. Now, he didn't have a 2020. Montana State didn't play. They uh, canceled the season. But you could tell that he really polished up on some of his technique and understanding of the position during that time off. He is rumored to be a high 4-5 guy, very intriguing. He's going to be this combine warrior because you definitely see the ability, the agility, and the uh, explosiveness in his play. That shows up on his junior film a lot. Uh, here, I got to correct something in my note skis here. By the way, that my, uh, I'm, by, before the end of the year, man, I'm going to make that my full draft board rankings available for y'all on a Patreon. If y'all want to check that out, I got a lot of guys ranked and you'll see as I continue to evaluate guys where I move them and such. And then you also have access to the 2023, which I'm going to get started working on that probably, uh, once everyone kind of decides where they want to declare and such. Uh, if they want to come out or if they want to return. Like, we've seen a lot of good guys return, like Will McDonald out of Iowa State. But let's talk more about this guy. Again, he's a bit raw, but he's such a great athlete. He's more of an athlete playing linebacker at this point. He showed improvement in his tackling in 2021, became a better just a rapper, upper of the ball carrier, uh, so to speak. He went from a uh, 19% missed tackle rate in 2019 to 10% this season as a run defender. He's still kind of flows with the play rather than trying to penetrate and blow it up. But I can see him like at the next level kind of getting lost. Like he doesn't really find the ball well in the backfield. Uh, he gets kind of lost in pre-snap motions. Again, very new to the position, but there's a lot of upside, a lot of potential. He's been very dangerous in coverage. And y'all know me, man. I love me a good coverage linebacker. Like delicious. Uh, Great ball skills, three interceptions, nine pass breakups through two seasons. He plays fast. He shows a great motor. He plays to the whistle. This guy, he stands to make a lot of money at the Senior Bowl. And then we're going to go through some offensive linemen, offensive tackles. Because there's a lot of guys I have not talked about this position. position. Certainly not this guy. We're going to be talking about uh, Central Michigan's right tackle, Luke uh, Godek. Godek. I'll figure it out before the end of it. But another guy that got a senior bowl invite, he missed all of 2020 with a knee injury. He is the less talk about Central Michigan tackle offensive line member, but we'll talk about that cat in a little bit. But he is very good in his own right. Another guy that's a former tight end because uh, Raymond was a former tight end as well. But I like this guy's movement skills. No kidding. He used to play tight end, uh, especially as a run blocker. He does a good job of getting out in front of the ball carrier, uh, getting to the second level. He's got this finisher mentality. He likes to bury uh, block or bury defenders. I like that mentality. As a pass protector, he does a very good job of Marin um, posing rushers. And he uses his hands well to really latch on and take those guys for a ride. Speedier rushers. They will get a little bit of the better of them. They'll dip on them, and it will result in a few uh, holding calls this season. It has. But, man, this guy, uh, Senior Bowl is going to be a good litmus test to where exactly his ceiling is because I'm very encouraged by when I went to go watch some Central Michigan because that's just something I, Yeah, I just I just haven't done. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I get to these uh, group of five guys a little bit later, but – Nah, he's he's pretty darn good. But I guess we could talk about his teammate Bernhard Raymond out of Central uh, Michigan. No kidding, it's his teammate. I even got a picture of him as a tight end. He is a foreign exchange student from Austria. He came to Central Michigan as a tight end, moved to the tackle position in 2020. He made Bruce Feldman's freaks list for his athleticism, for his size, and on top of that, bench press of 450. I could only wish I could ever achieve such a dream. I got to that, like, I got close to 250. 
Uh, that, I'm pretty proud of that. I'm, I'm standing here at like 5'8", five, 5'9", five, on a good day, 160 nothing, 170 now, but, uh, <laughs> you know, it is what it is. But he is, f- for being unbelievably new to the position, his technique is far beyond its years. I mean, a lot of that is comes as being a run blocker as a tight end. But through two seasons at left tackle, he has only allowed 15 pressures and only one sack coming this year. He's very quick, moves well in space. Ari, I love it. I'm a sucker for athleticism. Very explosive uh, sidestep in passing sets. So getting out and really playing with the angles, blocking angles. When it comes to these edge rushers, Mayor guys extremely well. He is, again, 6'7", a bit taller, but on the tall side. And what do those tall tackles deal with? When it, like, what is the negative? Oh, leverage. They get out leverage. Guys get under their pads quick. Yeah, Bernhardt, there's times where he plays a bit high and he lets those guys get underneath him. Um, but, man. Outside of that, man, I really love this guy's play. For as strong as he is, I wish to see a little bit more pop from his hands, especially as a run blocker. But, again, I'm a sucker for athleticism. This guy, I can't wait to see him in the Senior Bowl. He's going to make a lot of money, I assume. Speaking of another guy, oh, excuse me, that's probably going to make a lot of money in the Senior Bowl, Trevor Pennant. I've talked a lot about him because he, because of Mock the Mock. That's just kind of what happens in Mock the Mock. You see these guys that... You know, you don't normally do because you're seeing, you're looking at different people's draft boards and such. This is a guy that has yet to really make my draft board or like my first round mocks and such. Um, but, and he didn't make my offensive line ranking or offensive tackle rankings initially. But again, another guy's probably going to make a lot of money at the Senior Bowl. And I'm one of those guys that like kind of wait and see. I'd rather wait and see. And then I will move them accordingly but he is definitely a better prospect than his former teammate uh spencer brown both were mammoths of men they were mountains sitting there at six seven or uh 321 and honestly he looked better than spencer brown when they played together in 2019 and 2020 a pet in he looked much more comfortable handling d2 edges than brown he actually did it with relative ease he made bruce feldman's freaks list for his speed and explosiveness he also has freaky freaky length uh just to combine that the dude has is very strong very definite with his blows he can really kill the momentum of edge rushers he's up there with neil and icky in terms of just his mentality as a run blocker i love these guys that love to bury dudes in the run game now he does need to need to work on his pass protection technique when i was watching um when i was able to find more film of him there was something like uh, the, the like you see the athleticism right you see this is a guy that can uh, mirror pass rushers with relative ease but again like most tall tackles he struggles with playing high Leonard rushers get leverage and get underneath his pads uh it's gonna that type of stuff in the nfl especially if you throw these guys out raw it's gonna lead to sacks and penalties uh, another thing is his footwork the guy's really light on his feet but a lot of times you just like watch him moving his feet and it's just like he's doing nothing it's like wasted movement. He's like sitting there, but wh- wh- where where are you actually going with this? Like, what are you doing? It just feels there's a lot of wasted motions um, and movements in his footwork. But another guy I really, really like, think he's going to make a lot of money at the Senior Bowl. And then my final guy, I don't know if he got, I think he got a Senior Bowl in fight. That or a Shrine, I don't know yet. Um, or, I mean, I guess I could look it up, but is what it is is max mitchell out of louisiana he plays like a guy who has had over 2700 snaps under his belt which he has he's a very savvy uh uh, tackle he uses blocking angles very well gets his body in really good positions takes advantage of uh that he's just a very smooth athlete i wouldn't say he's like the most athletic tackle in this class or he's nearly the most explosive but he's just smooth for the position he's quick to get into position and displays just real greasy hips man i like a guy that can cha 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 you know but he when he's willing to open up the outside he does it very fluently and then he rides these guys 
Overall, he can work on his full body strength and using his hands kind of in unison rather than independently. That was something I also commented on with Icky. My dog wants to be a part of the video. Come on, Gojo. You want to be a part of the video? Come be a part of the video. Y'all want more dog, more dog. Keela's just chilling out in the hallway like a good dog. But, uh, I mean, the full body strength thing, he's sub 300. You kind of expect that. Puts on more weight, that'll be fine. I think his strength will come along. He's pretty lean. So, guy I really like. Oh, you want to you wanna give me a kiss? Thanks. Right in my tongue. Gave me a French. Thanks, bud. All right. Who, who are we talking about next, Gojo? Ah, I can't be missed to talk about Cameron Thomas at San Diego State. The only time I've really only brought him up was probably in a 2021 mock draft. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think I included him as a second rounder, and now he's kind of getting the, the the hype. He he had a freak, freak season for the Aztecs. Um, what he had, what, what, what was it? 77 pressures and 12 sacks. Ridiculous. He's kind of known as the Aiden Hutchinson of the group of five. Uh, the fewest pressures he was held to in a game this season was four. And he played more on the outside this season. But he, keep in mind, this guy was playing 260 the last couple of years on the interior most of the time. Still registering uh, 40 pressures in six sacks. And then uh, in 2019 and 2020, he had 37 pressures and five sacks. So he was still very productive. However, however, follow me. I wouldn't say... While he's a, you could say he's a similar prospect in terms of how he was utilized and just kind of what his playing style is to Aiden Hutchinson, he is not the same athlete of, as Aiden Hutchinson. He's very powerful, but ah, uh, I wouldn't say he's nearly as explosive. Like he's got a good first step. He controls the line of scrimmage exceptionally well. His grip strength is just nuts. Uh, he's got a very deadly push pull move, which. That's Aiden Hutchinson in a nutshell, dude. But I wouldn't say they are the same caliber of athlete. I don't think there's the same type of agility or explosiveness as uh, Aiden Hutchinson. His late hand placement, very good. Uh, very deadly swim move as well. Like it, when you go back and watch some of his tape, like he loves dis display, uh, like displaying this swim move, whether it's on the inside or the outside. The versatility, very tantalizing. He played uh, almost 400 snaps on the outside, uh, almost 300 at a four tech, almost or a little over 600 in the B gap, and then almost 400 at nose tackle. This guy has a lot of snaps under his belt. Uh, he's gonna be, be good. He's gonna be a good prospect. I don't know if he creeps into the first round. He might for a lot of people. I saw Todd McShay had him there, but uh, I feel like that was more of a to mix it up and get this guy's name more known and recognized. But he's a good prospect. I could see coming off the board day two. And then let's talk about Sky Moore out of Western Michigan, wide receiver. Uh, first time I really heard about this cat was on the Tailgate podcast. Mike Renner, Austin Gale. Um, it was first the interview with him, and then they kind of like talked about this guy as kind of the uh, Deontay Johnson in this draft, which that perked my ears up. I was like, oh, I love Deontay coming out of Toledo. Let me watch some of this guy. And I kind of disagree that they're the same ath like level of athlete. Uh, I mean, let, let's talk about it more. Sky Moore's performances versus the Power Five this year. He he was doing very well versus Michigan. Had to leave the game early because of injury, but he had two receptions, 22 yards. Left the game exceptionally early. So let's go to the Pittsburgh tape. Then he went off 10 receptions, 123 yards, and a TD uh, against Pittsburgh. The TD was kind of because the cornerback fell. So. He was it was like on a slant quarterback just slipped behind him so just went off for like a 20 something yarder but his quarterback uh LB he did miss him on a 39 yard bomb where he just kind of if it was a better throw if he didn't just overlead him that would have been an easy touchdown but this cat he's very slick very savvy as a route runner he has no problem getting separation uh getting separation versus the uh versus oh my gosh dude sorry I, I i keep hovering over my notes and 
it disappears. But he gets very good separation versus like uh, the the group of five teams he faces. But you could tell in Pittsburgh the coverage was a lot more tighter. So I don't necessarily think he might have the separation skills similar to Deontay Johnson. But this guy makes good catches in traffic. He was 8 of 13 on contested catches this year. But yeah, he was making all these... Uh, all these very contested catches against Pittsburgh. So you like to see that. You like to see that. He's pretty explosive on the top of routes and out of his breaks. When he's given the ball in space, man, he shows really good uh, stop-start ability and just very good acceleration. He led the nation in forced missed tackles with 26. I don't think he's the same prospect as Deontay Johnson. I don't think I'm going to have him that high necessarily. Like I have him, I think, fourth round or early day three could be a guy that creeps into day two like i really like this cat don't get me wrong i really like him i just don't think he's the same prospect as deontay johnson that i think deontay johnson was a bit more um he got a bit more separation against top talent but you again you like to see the catches in traffic so a guy i really like guy to watch out for all right let's talk about dom peterson i've talked about this cat uh maybe a couple of times on my uh either whether it was in the rankings video maybe he didn't even make the cut in the rankings video but um i know i've talked about him in one of my other segments but this is a cat that's gonna go somewhere day three whether it's early mid to late because teams aren't gonna like his size for an interior defensive player at six foot uh 285 but he has been so productive through his career with 124 pressures, 28 sacks. This season, 47 pressures, 9 sacks. Yes, he's undersized. Yes, his length, not that great. But despite that, he's stupid powerful and pretty athletic. He's a very twitchy athlete for the interior position. He doesn't let blockers get underneath his pads. He's very good uh, with his hands, swapping those uh, the hands away. The size will be a concern, but man... Golly gee, dude, he has such such good pop from his hands. As if he's able to get under a under a blocker's pads or get into their their chest, their strike zone, dude, bam, it's gonna be definite. Like this cat is like Aaron Donald, light, light, light. Maybe Ed Oliver, light, light, light. Uh, he's a similar athlete, a similar prospect in that regard where he's undersized, but he's so strong, so athletic. It almost doesn't even matter. This is a guy I really like. He's going to be a, my guy. Uh, but yeah, man, Don Peterson, you did well. So let's end the video with the guy I haven't really talked about, but I really like, I've been on this guy since I think 2020, I had him in a mock draft and he was in a 2021 mock draft. Like I like this cat out of Boise. Khalil Shakir out of the receiving class. This cat is going to be, he's just a good receiver. He can win from the outside, win from, uh, win from, uh, the slot. He really seemed like only a slot player in 20, uh, or in 2019 before moving to the outside in 2020. And just his production didn't miss a beat. Uh, then in 2021, they moved him back a little bit more to the slot where 75% of his snaps came from there. But this guy, he's not going to be a jump ball guy. He's not going to be that guy. He's going to be a very good route runner, a very good chain mover, and even better, he can make guys miss after the catch. He has 36 force miss tackles to his name, uh, over 1,100 yards after the catch all through three seasons. He's been very good after the catch. A guy that's going to move the sticks. He's just going to be, he, I think he has the potential to be a good number two, a good slot receiver in the NFL. You like to see that versatility. I got him currently like kind of sniffing the end of day two, but I could see him probably going in day three. But again, this receiving class is going to be very interesting how everyone's ranked. But a guy to throw on your radar. But that's it for the video. Go ahead. Let me know what you think and list some of the guys that you think maybe should have been on the list or maybe I should check out. But as always, until next time, you be easy, my friends. Later.